So I'm back making another Sparks Mouse video because I feel like the last one didn't really go into detail on anything about Sparks really. So this is going to be a longer and more detailed version of it explaining about Sparks Mouse and why it's the worst homework website ever created. So I want to start off by talking about the questions on Sparks Maths and how you get way too many in a single week. Now without cheating, completing one of these questions will probably take quite a lot of time because some of them are pretty hard. And some of them are pretty easy. That's the problem with uh, the questions as well. It's the unbalancing. Because one question, you'll be you'll be in about five hours. And the next minute, you'll be in five minutes. So it's really like unbalanced the way they uh, make their questions and stuff. Sparks is very strict with its questions and basically forces you to do it by yourself with barely any help. You could say the support video is kind of helpful, but it's not really because in the support videos, it basically gives you the easiest version of that question you're using. Along with the fact that when you get a question wrong twice, it gives you a completely different question to one you've already been given. Sparks essentially gives you a kick in the face for every question you're trying to beat. And keep in mind, you get about 40 questions on average in every week. So you're spending a good, a good chunk of your week doing these stupid little inconvenient questions with no help whatsoever. Now, a removed feature from Sparks that was present last year was um, saying to seek help if you get a question wrong a, a bunch of times. And I'm kind of glad that they got rid of this because this is a really poor choice of words, like seeking, seek help. That's just weird to say. I get what they're trying to say, even like go seek help, speak to your parent or teacher or something if you're stuck in this question. But it's the way they say it, seek help. And a stupid little like purple flag as well which is basically like the symbol of surrendering. And it's funny that on some questions it tells you that you're not allowed to use a calculator. And really, the only re the only time they're ever going to tell you this is for a question that you can't use a calculator for, which is pretty stupid to say the least. And anyway, even if it was possible, I'd still use one. What, what are they going to do? Tell me off through the screen. And apparently there's also a new multi-part question, which I'm really not out sure how this ranks because I've never tried one of them before. But to be honest, it sounds a little bit sketchy, so I wouldn't use it. Okay, so now we're going to be talking about the book work checks, which honestly, this is probably going to be the most ranting I'm ever going to do in this video so far. So in a nutshell, for each question, there was a two-digit code you must write down. A few questions after, they ask you what the answer is to the code of that question. If you get one wrong, they're going to come at you, sending loads more book work codes in your face. And each one you get wrong, you get the question wrong. So you're most likely thinking, why is this a thing? Well, even after a year in my school using Sparks, the answer isn't really clear, and it's more annoying than useful. According to Sparks, the reason why they use it is to help students embed good practice and to help them and their teachers keep track of any misconceptions. Yappuccino yeah, overload. Book group codes really do more harm than good, as you'll either be writing their book or on a Word document on your computer, and it's such a waste of time to write a code for every single question. They also changed book group codes in a new update, now being two digits instead of three. The two digits of the code indicates the question you're on. For example, a question called 5B will have its book quick code be the same symbol. It's unclear why they changed it, as the original was just a random mix of two letters and one number at the end. The problem with the original ones, though, is that they weren't randomly generated. It was just a selection of around possibly 80 different set codes. This is the reason why you'll most likely see the same three-digit code for a different question on a different week. My friend had a rare encounter where he had the same three-digit code twice in one week. He had no idea which one it was referring to, so he naturally got it wrong. This is one of the many flaws of this website. This one is unique to the rest, though, because it was actually fixed. Oh, and if you don't know what book quick codes are, well, lucky for you, because when you first go on the website, you'll get a three-minute unskippable video telling you what book quick codes are. Hooray! The inconsistency that the book quick codes have is the fact that it disrupts your flow of answering the questions by a ton, which is undermining the intended purposes of the codes as an efficient and seamless tool. It's such an insult to injury for not only spending 20 minutes on a question, but to the fact that if you forgot to write one down, even forgetting one simple code, Sparks has absolutely no sympathy when it comes to book quick codes. It seems like an extra feature that's really out of place for a website that gives you a ton of questions in one single week. In the unskippable Sparks video, it mentions about the fact that they're not trying to make it seem annoying, rather to just help you with your learning. First of all, I'm not learning crap. Second of all, if you're not making it an annoying tool, then don't. Worst case scenario for the Sparks team is to delete the code, but there really seems like no other way to improve them. 
If you do plan to keep a feature, my way of updating them is giving a code once every five questions. And if you get one wrong for the first time, it doesn't get your question wrong, serving as like a practice. When you get it wrong for the second time, though, you only get one question wrong and not loads more. Even though it's not a good way to improve them, and deleting them is the best answer to this puzzle, book quick codes are a waste of time and will possibly even cut you off from a quote-unquote learning experience that you may have on this website. As of right now, Sparks Underwear has a 2.4 star review on Trustpilot. RIP OFF! I ordered seven pairs of underwear for my husband on the 25th of November 2023 and after three emails to find out where they are, they haven't received any response. Are, we, are these people for real? Taking money, not even giving any response and not even sending out the underwear? What the hell? These are expensive underwear. Never, never again. Do not buy from this company. Joke aside though, I do actually want to talk about uh, Sparks' Trustpilot reviews. So if you search up Sparks and Trustpilot, you'll see quite a few pages of the reviews. And the funny thing is, essentially all of them have been closed. It states that, unfortunately, it's not possible to leave a review as the company's website is closed. This is obviously not true. The most likely explanation as to why this is the case is because either someone at Trustpilot or someone at Sparks has seen the reviews and requested to close the review page. If this has been done from someone at Sparks, then it's definitely possible that Mark Dixon himself, the creator of Sparks, has seen these reviews, but has decided not to do anything. It's an interesting topic to think about, as on every social media that Sparks and Mark is on, their comments are filled to the boom with extremely negative hate comments saying, delete this app and this app makes me want to jump off a bridge. And it's such a stubborn thing that, despite Mark knows about these comments, it seems he does very little regarding the changes people want to see on this app. He has a website where he is semi-actively blogging about his life, and it seems that he does a lot more than be the creator of Sparks, which he bought from Colin Hegarty for an undisclosed sum. I guess he's too busy kite surfing to be asked to change the stupid site. 30 days complete. Here's a summary. 29 out of 30 days kiting. Expert is officially the best. It's back to the running. It's yeah, this is made by the same guy who made book quote codes. Bit weird to think about. And here's his profile if you want to check it out as well. So the support videos and sparks are basically the equivalent of teaching a deaf person how to listen. The inconsistency they have for answering a question different from from yours, sometimes being the easiest version of said question. The videos are also such a pain to go through because of the annoying voice that the several actors have. Mostly, I just put the videos on mute and just follow the subtitles. The fact that the question is different to yours is just annoying, but it kind of makes sense as it would just tell the answer. But a better alternative is to give hints to the question besides telling you the answer. One of the crucial reasons why the question in the support video is different is because of the fact that getting a question wrong twice leads to a new version of it, which is a pretty lazy mood on, move on Spark's end. I've also had a few instances where they recycled the same video for multiple questions. There is no thought to its structuring, and the flaws in this website give a pretty strong indicator as to how this website is most likely being rushed for a quick cash grab. Speaking of cash grabs though, a rumour has gone around that Sparks is cheap for schools. Compared to sites like Dr Foss and Hegarty Maths, those sites are pretty expensive for the schools. Sparks on the other hand is quite cheap. This can explain why there are flaws in this site, such as the poorly coded interface and a bug that lets you skip book quick codes, which I'll explain later in this video. It takes no genius to realise that this website has been rushed. Now, something else I want to talk about is the fact that there's no support or help with people with learning disabilities. For example, someone with dyslexia might not be able to answer these questions properly. They just throw everyone in with the same annoying and frustrating questions. This limitation that Sparks has lacks accessibility from appropriate learning stages that other students might have. Sparks really said, black, white, we're all equal, and gave everyone the same stupid questions. Very annoying that a website like this created by uncaring people make the same questions for everyone. It's really lazily done by the creators and, no, and other people behind this. For parents as well, there should be an option to disable certain questions students can't meet their target. But no, everyone has to do them, no matter what. And no matter if you get 1% or 99%, it still marks it as late. It isn't late, it's just your standards are way too high for people even in the lowest set of maths are required to complete. Going even to the point where they send your parents an email on a weekend to say you haven't finished or started your homework. 
the spam emails that Spark send you are sent through the school's email, so you think it's important. Additionally, they give you an email every Tuesday to say that your new work is due. Parents can also see the exact amount of percentage they've got for each chapter of their homework, even the past ones, essentially spying on you. Teachers can also see how long you've been on Spark. This should be an option for students, but this is probably done to prevent cheating. You can still keep your computer focused on Spark, so. Spark is also measured by how long you're using it, as per se. So if you only get 20% but have been on it for an hour or two, you get a pass. But if you get 40% and have only been on it for 10 minutes, it's very likely you don't. It's such a stupid thing to do, and they'd probably disable students to see percentage if they could. Another stupid thing that's present on this website is the fact that they treat it like a baby when it comes to motivation and mini games. By the way things work in Spark, you wouldn't think it was made for secondary school kids. The stupid text quotes say, You got this, followed by muscle emoji, is really cringe and monotonous. And the times table mini games are just stupidly easy and they're all the same thing reskinned, acting like you're eight years old. It's so stupid and unmotivated. Something you'd see in a primary school. I'm 14 years old as they're doing this script. And to me, this is just so stupid and babyish for a site like this. Sparks, compared to a homework site like Hegarty Maths, seems soulless. You complete each question just feeling empty inside, with the support videos being super forced and into the point on you. Compared to Hegarty, it's just emotionless. Hegarty Maths does have a nice feel to it, including the iconic singing video from there. Sparks Maths, on the other hand, has no love and care put into it. It was made with just money in its mind, not the pain students get put through and how it is forced into you and so in your face. Honestly, I could go on all day about Sparks, venting about its millions of flaws, the fact that there's 5,000 trust pilot reviews going on about it, Mark Dixon himself ghosting everyone, and so much more. I have a feeling that Sparks didn't test their homework site before releasing it. It's the equivalent of a game being rushed just because they want to meet their deadline. The, dif the difference with a rush game, though, is that they get updates to improve it. Just look what happened to a game like Cyberpunk 2077. It had thousands of bugs and bad game design upon release, but after a couple years, it was all fixed. Sparks does get updates, changing its interface and whatnot, but it doesn't seem to change its design when it comes to accessibility. Some quality of life features that should be added is customising your interface. Right now, Sparks only has this blue tint that gives off a depressing atmosphere. A feature like changing your interface is a great idea. Adding something like a dyslexia friendly mode and a, even a dark mode would be a good addition. But like I've mentioned before, Mark Dixon is too busy kite surfing to add these features to improve this. Another feature is adding an app for Sparks Maths for phones and tablets. Now Sparks was built heavily with PC usage. This makes using the website on a mobile device like a phone or tablet ineffective. It is by far possible to use Sparks on a mobile device. It's just you have to use it on Google or any web browser you use. This isn't much of a problem, because personally I didn't use mobile for it, but the fact that there isn't a designated Sparks app is pretty lazy on the creator's end. This does prove a solid point in how Sparks is made with only money on mind, the fact that it was rushed as well. Clear explanations and constructive feedback are not a strong point for a website like Sparks. Sparks mouse falls short in every aspect of learning. The explanations provided are often brief, lacking in-depth analysis or alternative problem-solving approaches. Furthermore, the feedback given for incorrect answers is often generic or basically invisible, failing to provide the necessary guidance for students to rectify their mistakes effectively. Along with the heavily used of support videos, which basically do nothing, helping this website is essentially invisible. Comparing Sparks to Hegarty, where Hegarty Math shows you the answers, it surely didn't top but put two brain cells into making this easy and not frustrating for many wrong reasons. Now, while I was researching the different uh, things about Sparks for this video, I found out there's not really that much information about Sparks. It's really kind of annoying to research it. If you want to find information about Sparks, whether it's who made it or when it was made, there's a little to no information about Sparks. It took me enough to find out who actually made the create, who actually made Sparks himself. This is either done by design or lack of. The only date we possibly have uh, for when it was made is possibly 2016. But other uh, websites I've seen either say 2010 or 2020. Even though this is a bit petty, it's still a bit strange how none of this information is out there. He even points out that Mark Dixon bought Hegarty Maths for an undisclosed sum. What have they got to hide, mate? Now, if you once again compare Sparks to other websites like Hegarty and Maths Watch, they uh, offer options to skip and disable questions. But with Sparks, this isn't possible. Neither if you're a teacher or a parent, it is impossible to disable book quick codes, skip questions, or skip homework overall. 
The only skip you get is getting a question wrong, offering you to skip the question. Instead of getting it right for you, it just forwards you to the next one, marking it as wrong. The fact that parents can't even have their own account as well is frustrating, so they can disable certain options. But really, disabling questions are no-no for Sparks, and this is what makes the website unique in all of the wrong ways. Really, Sparks is a heart, but no soul. It's a software designed to help people with homework, obviously, but the f- website, in fact, makes learning harder with book quick codes. The book checks is awful and forces people to write stuff down in a work document or even the book. It's a common problem among teachers trying to make their jobs easier by dumping homework on students without thinking for two seconds. Honestly, Sparks really has it all. Book quick checks, having to get 100% or you get detention, uses videos and no one helping you if you don't understand it unless you have a good teacher. So in conclusion, if you want genuine help for maths, use Seneca or Dr. Frost. They teach you how you got that mistake and how to fix it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. It was quite long. I'm not really made a talk video for this long. I'm not really made a talk video at all. I think I actually am pretty proud of this video. It's definitely better than the old one I made, which I only covered through like three topics. For this one, I've covered quite a lot. And I've also been using a script as well. I don't know if you can tell. So I can have like better um, thingy. I can have better dialogue without like me stuttering. So yeah, if you didn't enjoy this video, remember to give it a like. And well, good luck on your sparks.